Hey guys, Donovan Myers out in the garage. It is day one of construction, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at the materials and the tools I'm going to be using. So this is a two by two piece of pine. This is going to be the feet that run along the bottom. Uh, it's, I wanted them to be solid, so that's the reason I went with this over stacking two pieces of MDF together. These are one by two, so really one and a half by half. I'm going to use these to frame together. So if I have two pieces of MDF coming together, um, It'll be on the inside of that, and I'll screw through that rather than screwing through the MDF. That'll keep it from splitting. I got this piece of uh, angle offset aluminum. It's a half inch by three quarters. So the half inch part is going to sit uh, and hold down the control panel overlay. Um, the real v does that, so I wanted to attempt to get close to that with uh, this cabinet. This is a four by eight sheet of half inch MDF. It's just cut up like this to fit in my car. This is a four by eight foot sheet of three quarter inch MDF. Again, cut up to fit my car. And lastly, uh, some optics. This is for the control panel overlay, underlay, and that rounded top part that's uh, not really the marquee, but the top part of the cabinet. So here are some of the tools we're going to be using. This is a circular saw. I just got this new 60 tooth blade. Should be pretty good for MDF. We're gonna be sanding it, so. Uh, an orbital sander I've got over here, a router for doing the bevels and other rowdy type stuff, a uh, jigsaw for getting what we can't get with the uh, circular saw, but really the circular saw is going to be the bulk of it because it gives us the straightest uh, edges and stuff. I've got a uh, drill of course with drill bits, uh, here's some routers, router uh, bits. So the flush trim bit that will make two pieces that are supposed to be the same, uh, line up exactly the same. And then this is my half inch 45. I've got a 3 quarter inch 45, uh, which is really like this giant thing we'll get into later. Uh, tape measure, pencil, and a 90 degree angle. These are some clamps back here to obviously clamp stuff down. And uh, I've got some screws and wood glue. And I believe that's it for the tools. So we're ready to get into the build. So the first thing I'm going to build is the base. This uh, is mostly constructed out of half inch MDF, so I've got my big piece of uh, half inch MDF up on my stools, and what I'm going to do is just draw out the shape of the main side. These are my notes pulling the dimensions out of SketchUp. When this video goes up though, there should be a PDF of actual good measurements to go with this. So this is what I'm going to be drawing onto the MDF. So you might be able to just make it out, but I've drawn out the shape of the side here uh, going this way. This is the front piece here, and this is the, the angled back. I messed up three times trying to get that back right. Uh, so that's the tricky part. Just make sure, once you've drawn it out, measure everything and make sure that uh, it's exactly what it's supposed to be before you cut it out. So I'm going to do a little test here. I've got my straight edge clamped down on this scrap piece of wood, and I've drawn a line. Uh, along the edge there. So what I'm going to do is cut with my circular saw to and then measure the distance from the line to where the cut is and that way I'll know uh, how to make a perfect cut on the lines that I've drawn. So I can see here that my guide is one and a half inches. So what I'll need to do now is clamp one and a half inches away from where I want to cut on my main MDF piece. I know this is a little hard to see because of the light, but this line right here is the top, and I measured an inch and a half in to put my clamp down so that I can uh, cut with the circular saw. And I'm going to cut out the whole square first and then do the details. So I'm going to make this first cut. All right, so now that I have just this little square to work with, I'm going to clamp the rest of the area and get the rest of this cut out. So as you can see here, I uh, finished cutting it, and now what I'm going to do is use this as a template for the next side. So I've got this perfectly squared off in my square corner here, and I'll just trace this with a pencil. Now what I'll do is cut this out with a jigsaw. Uh, I guess I could use the circular saw too, but um, 
cut it out and then I'll clamp these together and then use that flush trim bit to make sure that these two are exactly the same. So I have that other piece uh, jigsawed out now. It's sitting on top of the good piece. And so what I'm gonna do is use the flush trim bit on this router to run along the bottom of the uh, nice piece to trim the other piece to be the same size. You can see I've adjusted the router so that the wheel rides right along the middle of this bottom board and the cut blade is gonna go along the top board and uh, it's clamped so that the bottom here is flush and this back side is flush. So all this other garbage is gonna get trimmed off. So now you can see the edge here is perfectly flush with the other one. Uh, so now these pieces are basically exactly the same. I wish I had known about this trick uh, with my first cabinet. The next thing to do is cut out the bottom piece. Okay, so I have the overall shape uh, drawn out and I'm going to cut this out. This will probably be the last time that I show just uh, cutting up MDF. So you can see I really botched up this cut. Uh, I should have clamped this to the stool, but this is the inside base. So I'm not too worried about it. It's not gonna show. Uh, so now I just need to cut out those little notches in the front. I'll probably end up using the jigsaw to do that. So the whole point of these are there's gonna be a one and a half inch piece of MDF here to make up part of that bevel. And then the front is gonna sit in front of that. So this needs to fit flush like this. So that then another front piece can come on uh, to be the front of the cabinet to have that one inch bevel on those front corners. So the bottom's done. So I have all my pieces cut out and now I wanna work on the front. So what I've done is, this is a one and a half wide piece of half inch MDF and it's sitting an inch into this, uh, the actual front piece. So I've got this very giant scary bit that does an inch deep. So this is what I'm gonna use for my three quarter inch uh, chamfers, 45 degree angles, as well as this one inch on the front. Uh, this thing is pretty crazy. You have to buy it at a like a woodworking shop. You can't get this at your hardware store. And it's a little pricey. You might want to try to find it on Amazon. I saw it on there for about 40 something bucks. So what I'm going to do is uh, glue and screw this board to the other board and then run my router along it uh, to get that one inch bevel on the side. So here you can see this piece now has been uh, glued and screwed together. This is the bottom piece where I cut out those uh, little notches. And that's why, so that this piece can go right like that. So before I do the routing on the side, what I want to do is... This side piece here is meant to have this angle here. So what I need to do is kind of trace this angle onto the side and then somehow figure out with my circular saw how to cut this off so that it meets, so that I can put a board here and this will be at the proper angle to kind of miter with that. So as you can see, I figured it out. Uh, in SketchUp it was about 26.2 degrees and on my circular saw it's not that accurate so I just had to keep kind of adjusting and eyeballing it to look at where the line was. Uh, but you can see here I made that cut all the way across and now this front piece is ready for its 45 degree chamfer. I have my giant router bit on my router and I've tested it on this uh, piece of 2x4 and it's lining up like I want it to. So now what I have is that front piece with the, you know, the little side piece hooked up to it and then underneath a straight piece of MDF and that's what this bearing is gonna run along so to keep this uh, straight. You could also use a gate at the back here and clamp that down. Um, we'll see how this works out. I may do that for the other side.
So besides shooting sawdust everywhere, that worked out pretty good. I've got my perfect uh, one inch by one inch 45 degree bevel here. A uh, little uh, wood filler or something in here, a little paint, you won't even notice that's two pieces. Now that I have uh, pretty much everything cut out, what I want to do is use these pieces of uh, pine here to work as a frame rather than screwing through you know, this part of the MDF into the other part of the MDF. That would be potentially uh, a weak joint because it could pull out or something like that. Plus you got the screws on the outside. So uh, doing this framing way, what I'll do is screw this piece flush uh, down into the bottom and then come back and screw uh, this into the side. And that will uh, give me a screw-free connection as well as a much more uh, strong one. So I pre-drilled my holes for this piece. What I'm going to do is then get it flush on there and then drill through it again to leave little marks down there. And then I'll go back and screw in the nails all the way. So I have this one glued and screwed right here. So I can easily now put this side, line it up, drill through, and then put in the uh, screws for that. So I'm going to do the other side just to get it on camera. So I'm just basically going to repeat this process to build the entire base. So this is the end of day one. I've got the entire base built. These screws right here are holding in this piece that I've glued. I'll take these out and fill that so you won't even see that. Uh, there's a little bit of a lip here where this edge meets the flat piece. This will be sanded down. Uh, same goes for this. There's a little bit of seam right there that will obviously get filled. This has got a little overhang so that I can sand it off. And then some of these you know, edges right here will get filled in where that bevel is. And then to get this piece to fit, I had a little trouble with that. And I also, I don't know if it picks up on the camera, but I messed up that bevel there. So this will all get filled with some wood filler. Uh, I'm still waiting for my door to show up from Home Depot. That'll go here. Uh, so I didn't glue the supports that are holding this on so that I can easily just unscrew it do the door, screw it back in and glue it at that time. So that's the end of day one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video.